Hey guys, this is John Box, and I'm here with Triv Gaming. Yeah, it's up here. Holy shit, we fucking nailed that. Okay, we got this. We got this. Okay, it's been a while since we've done an episode of Ultimate Counter Guide with resident host of me and our special guest, Triff Gaming, of course. And uh, of course, I'm going to be picking at your brain a lot. And uh, don't worry, guys, we got five matchups across the top. We got three parts to this video. This video, episode one, is going to be about hand traps. It's going to be on this channel, which you're currently already watching, of course. Part two, it's going to be on Triff's channel. And that's going to be about how to reverse 2-0 the opponent going first. I'm an expert at this. Yeah. And finally, part three is going to come back to our channel here, and that is going to be going second cards for this format. I know you guys want to clap Tier Shizu. Don't worry, Tier Shizu is here. Spoiler alert. I kind of reverse the spoiler, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so, but before we get started, Triff, any shout outs you want to give right now? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, guys, thank you guys for watching this. I want to give a big shout out to MSC TV. Tom Box is the GOAT, literally the design engineer, architect of Yu Gi Oh! Also, I want to give a shout out to this new game I'm involved in. It's a combination of Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon and Magic. It's called Illustrals. Link will be in the description. I think it has potential to even beat Yu-Gi-Oh! I, I love this game. Oh, man. I've been hearing but you But I love Yu-Gi-Oh! as well. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! as well. Today, we're helping... I'm addicted to Yu-Gi-Oh! Bro, I actually think I'm addicted to Yu-Gi-Oh! I, I, I'm addicted to Yu-Gi-Oh! I love this game. <laughs> we should go to Yu-Gi-Oh! Players Anonymous. You yeah. Know, just, <laughs> just go sit in a circle. Like, hey, guys. My name is Tom. <laughs> And, we'll uh, be the co-presidents. We'll be running the thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we're going to do Ultimate Counter Guide. Now, I'm going to reveal to you guys the matchups, of course. Across the top, we have Tier Shizu. I think anything is Shizu related, we'll just stuff under that column too, because, you know, why not? We have yeah. sprites and its variants. There's going to be a lot of overlap, because this is also a format where you're likely to see more engines than just straight up decks. Except when you're playing Flunder, that's they're just special. Yeah. And then we have best deals, and we also have Naturia. Yeah, Naturia made the list. I think they are surprisingly good because they are also able to use, abuse the Ishizu stuff. We'll talk about them more a bit later because, uh, I mean, there's also like Pendulum, but we're going to keep that spicy. If you guys want to check out Pendulums, check out the recent video posted. Thanks to Triff showcasing everything. Pen God is back, of course. And Pen for hand deck. traps, yeah, Pen Best Deck. For hand traps this time around, Okay, I shoved Ash in there because a lot of people are somehow still on Ash. I don't know why you guys are still on Ash, but we're going to talk about Ash. We're going to talk about Imperm, D Shifter, Bistials, and DD Crows. We're going to talk about Skullmeisters and Bells, basically Grave Negates, and of course the all powerful effect negations of Gamma and Herald of Orange Light, Herald of OJ. And for a little bit of a legend for you guys, we have Blood Cards, which gets a double big green check mark impactful which is the one green check mark that's usually pretty good we have check mark fr what is this a follow-up required because it works but it doesn't like work alone it needs something else but the, the card alone is good then there's conditional where you probably have the card anyway but you can use it it does make an impact but not the biggest one then there is a second card required usually some sort of hand shop related item where the first one basically does nothing you're gonna need a second one counter for counter play meh you have it in the deck you have to throw it at something and then there's a there's bad which is it basically does nothing and then there's trash where it basically helps the other guy all right that is the le legend rundown so we're gonna get started here of course we're gonna start with the matchup that you guys care about the most tier shizu we gotta clap the tier zero tier ishizu and uh, before you guys do anything, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, ding that notification bell, and go over to smash the subscribe button with yeah. your elbow. <laughs> that's with what Sam elbow. says in his videos, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what Sam says, right? <laughs> and don't forget to check out Trip Gaming and go to, over to his side and also oh, thank you, thank you. destroy but, his subscribe button. Make uh, sure only, it's grayed out. Make sure it's grayed out, guys. Only if you destroy Tom's MST.TV subscribe button first. Okay, you know what? Agreed, agreed. I, I accept yeah. that. So, anyways, let's talk about Ash Blossom versus Tier Shizu. I'm not gonna lie, this card sucks against this match. I don't know why some people are still trying so on this card. I mean, you have a lot of problems with it, like Ash. So, so for now, okay, I'm gonna put an X on this because I actually think it's bad. I don't even think it's like conditionally good. Like the only condition which makes it good is they open like Rhino Heart and have nothing else. Like, they don't have a share in, they don't have any follow up. Like, I don't want to even want to hit the Ishizu cards with it because they don't want to activate their Ishizu cards. The sequence doesn't even allow it. Because of that, I'm going to give this one an X. Like, this is this is bad. What are your thoughts? Agreed wholeheartedly. Yeah, it's it's not good. There's chain blocks that are going to be like crazy. Dude, we're going to chain like 11. Do you think you're going to throw an ash somewhere in there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you cover Imperm and Valor? 
Sure. So uh, everyone knows what tier limits. I mean, I'm going to say what I say right now. If you can take anything in this whole video, what I'm going to tell you guys is like we're talking PhD level stuff. Let pay close attention. Hand traps by themselves, even one, sometimes even two, is not going to do anything as tier limit. However, think of the tier limit fusion effects. Sheeran, Havnis, and Merle. They're grave effects, not their actual effects. Don't worry about Rhino. Don't worry about the others. You have three of them. Okay. If you stop two of them, tier limit is doing nothing. So right. this is where Valor and Imperm is good. By itself, it is awful. Just one Valor, one Imperm, you are doing nothing. But Valor and Imperm can act as another DD Crow this in this way. Let's say, for example, you let their first tier limit resolve. Only allow one to resolve. They're going to summon Kikalos. They're going to Kikalos and you Valor or Imperm. From that moment on, any other tier limit fusion that gets used, you must stop it with your other hand traps. So Valor and Imperm is only good in conjunction with another graveyard hand trap. N not two Valors or two Imperms. Two Valor or two Imperms will do nothing. Yeah. But one Valor or Imperm or Mourner or what? Just one in conjunction with the graveyard interruption stops a lot of Telemus turns. You stop the Kikalos and the second graveyard interruption stops the second fusion. And it's very difficult for them to get a third. And the hit target is, of course, there's only one hit target. It's, it's Kit Kalos. Yeah, Kit Kalos. Exactly. And you make sure, don't save, like, let them resolve their kill them and stuff. Don't Skullmeister. Sorry, let them resolve their, um, their, the Ishizu stuff. If you have a Skullmeister or Bell or Crow or Bistol, I mean, Crow and Bell don't stop them, but the other hand trap has to specifically stop the second fusion. Yep. Think of this. You have three fusions. You stop two of them. They're done. Oh, focus on stopping those three. Don't Valor a Rhino. If you Valor a Rhino, I'm going to come to your locals and throw the table and break it. <laughs> Please. Okay, you guys heard it here first. Next one, we have a D shifter. Okay, you know what? Let's just put it right here. It's a, it's a blowout card. You skip their turn. Anything yes. that skips someone's entire turn equals blowout. Buying a whole yes. turn, dude, Yu Gi Oh! is only three turns. It's my yeah. turn, your turn, and it's my turn again, and that's the end of the exactly. game. So, exactly. yeah, D shifter, if it lands, of course, it's good. Of course, the condition being like they don't have Herald of the Orange Light -like, because that's broken. I don't think a lot of people are on the Call of the Grave. I know some of the um, less experienced players, they're still on Call of the Grave because they still hate getting hand trapped. When you play against like the really strong players, they optimize their deck strictly for the meta, but when you play against like someone a bit more random, they're going to have all the odd and ends hand trap you're gonna feel their full wrath of every single random card they put in just because it still works against you yeah <laughs> it's it's so weird you know what this deals and crows i think um this is a check mark i can't say it's for sure really good in fact yeah. i think you need something more like this so, so one thing to mention about the bestial and dd crows is one will not pass their turn but it's the same uh ideology of the imperm and the veiler so if you have two bistids they're cooked. They're, they're actually cooked. You cannot. They cannot play. Uh, a beauty as well of the Bisted cards. You have to keep in mind. Let's say you activate Magnemon. Okay. You banish with one of their tier limits. All right. You slow their turn a bit. They'll still play. However, Magnemon is just going to replace itself. So there's no negative involved here. Even if you just played. Even if you're playing a deck that can't play. Let's say you're playing some combo deck. Even if you throw in three Magnemon and like a Druid Worm, you still get absurd value. From the Magnemut resolving. But you do need to be careful that if they mill your deck and you mill a Magnemut, they could dark it. So that is yeah. a downside of Magnemut. But again, if you open, if you play, I'm going to say this now. If you look at D-Shifter, Valor, Imperm, Bistral's Crow, and like literally all, every one of these hand traps except Ash. Forget Ash. Don't even look at that. Like, don't even look at that. But yeah. the other five, dude, legit, any two of these five and they're cooked. So... Just throw in every single one of them, especially the graveyard ones. The graveyard ones is not like the Valor and Imperm sometimes is like depending on the situation. But if you have two of any of the graveyard ones, like it, even if you have four at any moment in the duel, they're extremely powerful. Even on your turn, they're extremely powerful. They're going to play on your turn regardless. So if they have Nis and send one of these. These cards are extremely usable every single turn. That's a huge like this is you cannot overlook the power of these, uh, but you do need at least two. That's why I recommend playing 18. I know it sounds weird, or even like if you play nine Bistet and nine of the DD Crow, Meister, Bell, Gamma, Herald, Shifter, just play play as many as humanly possible. Because if you do some math here, 
So, Tom, do you know I went to school for math? Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got kicked out, though, for being an idiot. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but there's still some genius knowledge in here. So, if we do some math here, okay, yeah. with a hypergeometric calculator of 18 hand traps, think of past format. Do you remember prank kid format? Yeah. yeah. You needed to see two hand traps. If you saw one, it's going to get negated by Griffin, yeah. and it's full prank kid combo. It's the same idea here. If you stop one kilom infusion, they do not care. They're going to do the others. If you stop two, they lose. Henceforth, if you play 18 of these, you are going to see two plus. In fact, you'll probably see three, you'll probably see four. And when that fifth card is the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh, Skull Corbat Joker, the duel's over. You just <laughs> <laughs> one card engine, one card engine, man. All you need is just your one card engine. If you have a Bisted on the field, they're all their hands done. And you just play your one card engine or two card engine, depending on the deck you play. They're, they're actually cooked. Like, imagine just activating Brian Fusion after you just stop their graveyard. Like, any one card engine in Yu-Gi-Oh! Anything, no matter what you play. That's why I highly recommend you just every single one of these, you max out on humanly possible, especially the graveyard ones. Because the graveyard ones, you don't even need to, once you stop them on turn one, you're going to stop them the following turn as well. And the following turn after that, and the following turn, as long as your deck can play the one, two card combos, GG. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And you just did a great thing there, Tom. Herald and Gamma on the grave. Don't don't Herald and Gamma uh, Rhino. I will actually slap anyone that does that. Please, Herald and Gamma the grave effects. Do not Herald and Gamma the monster effects, please. But like, if you Herald a Kikalos, it's triggering in the grave. So please, in the graveyard only. I can tell Mate. you guys for sure, because like uh, I have some buddies here, and uh, we've been playtesting. I, I have every single deck build, so we can like basically pick up whatever deck nice. we want to play. And, oh, you uh, should move to Toronto, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I should bring I my collection, right? <laughs> I, have, yes. I, I build every single deck so that we can playtest uh, at home here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very true. If you actually land two of the graveyard ones, like we've been testing this series, like, hey, if you just hit two, they really build nothing. They can't like they can't get into Rule Kalos. So in other words, your summon negation is fine. They're not getting Garura, so they're not setting up their graveyard for a potential... Um, uh, Predator Plant. There's a Predator Plant coming out because it's, it's really hard. They have a Kit Kalos on the field, and the only way that they're gonna fuse if they shuffle it back into the deck. It's is not good, and that also like leads to like oh they're missing like a lot of stuff. They don't have Suffer Merely to go into Elf. The only way they can sack you through this is they have Instant Fusion. Give me the fourth Fusion Summon. Oh yeah, that will change things. If they do open the Instant Fusion, then stopping the two Fusion idea. You actually need three hand traps at that point because yeah, they have it's, a fourth fusion. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that exactly. Makes sense. Instant fusion is a sack card. <laughs> yeah, so if they open instant fusion, you're still fine. That just means instead of two hand traps, you'll just need three. All right. We went to pretty much pretty in depth when, with these ones. We yeah. can just blow I, I, through. Exactly. Most of these I think ones. it's I think it's really good we went in depth for the first one because I think everyone knows that the first one's the most important. Like everyone plays Tier Shizu. The other ones, I think we could definitely blow through it 100%. Hey, before I continue on with the ultimate counter guide, I just want to announce that, hey, we're going to be doing an early launch on our Black Friday sale. You guys can actually check it out like right now, actually. I think it should already be on. Whether you need to pick up some cool foil sleeves, tournament level sleeves, you want to pick up some mat, or you want to sort your collection because the holidays are coming up and maybe you have some time on your hands to sort your collection. We've got box dividers, black or white, and even the subdividers, which will help you. And that's it for the announcement, guys. It's going to last about a week or so, and we're just going to jump right back to the ultimate counter guide with Triff. Okay, so now we're on to sprites, sprites versus ash. There are targets for this, and they're actually pretty good. The sad part is I'm only going to give this a conditional check. Like, it, it's good. There's some really good targets. Like, you want to hit stuff like Sprint. I don't even want them to send the card into the graveyard. Like, Sprint slash Nimble Beaver, not Nimble Beaver, Nimble Angler. You have to stop that play. It's too much value. They get two free bodies. Or if you have nothing to stop, you have to start to stop Gigantic. Gigantic or gives starter. Them, yeah, or it's starter. Like, also, start, starter, the starter is the force. Starter is the force. You're, you're, if they go starter, you're forced to actually ash that right away. There's no point because they're going to have something to negate you later on anyway, which makes your ash completely dead. So, yeah, you're kind of stuck, like, forced to do a lot of these things, and it's not comfortable. Yeah. Um... Can I mention one one quick thing, both for these, Ash, Imperm, and Valor? No one is expecting these this format. Everyone knows they're out of the format. Yeah. So the Sprite player is not going to set up Sprite Red protecting the Gigantic they Sprite. They are not. So Because they're not Valor. expecting these hand traps. So in that with that regard, even just typically you need two hand traps per deck, right? But they're, they're not going to prepare for that. So if you just stop the Gigantic Sprite, depending on their build, if they're playing Toad, dude, they're just going to have no Toad. They're going to have some baby board that you're just going to eat for breakfast. So... Uh, it, like in this format, only if it's a good player, because good players will not be expecting these hand traps because they're literally just not in the meta. Yeah. 
this is if they're a bad player and they're playing the old format and you're playing a rogue deck you're gonna you're, 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 you're gonna get cooked <laughs> you're gonna, like, they're gonna play around everything you have for some reason yeah. it's just because yeah. they haven't they're adapted to like yeah the two formats late deck. exactly they're just two formats late yeah gigantic sprite usually I think these they also they're not they're not game changers either but like they're they're not bad one for ones if they like let's say like their only way to a good play is sprite or their only way to a good play is sprint or like it's, it's not bad like just remember if they put up an elf you're kind of stuck if you're playing something in targets you're kind of right. stuck hitting the elf so that's why it's like not perfect d shifter is a bit weird it's not like you completely kill them but it's also not bad like they don't get to set up toad they don't get to set up like and like they actually don't get to set up a lot of stuff but the problem is they can just leave a board full of crap like they can still have two negates on the board at the end of the day it's the not the issue I have with Shifter is that they also play it. Exactly. It's uh it I don't makes know. them weaker. I, don't, I think they... Shifter would depend on what deck you play. Yeah, it depends on what deck you play. I, I would say it's still it gets the check for me because the board is a lot weaker. They can't 90% of the time they can't use smashers. They can't make toad. So what are they actually making here? I want to get into like one crazy thing if you're doing yeah. Shifter though, because there is Mosquito Ninja coming out. I'm not sure if you know this yet. Yeah, but, yeah. Mosquito Ninja's coming out. It gives them a different OTK. If you leave a twenty-seven hundred monster on the board, they put up four monsters. You're instantly dead. They're going to attack with Mosquito. Put a hallucination counter on your highest attacking monster, and they're going to throw all their monsters in that direction. And basically, every single attack is a magical cylinder, and you'll you'll basically just die. <laughs> we uh, we were playing with that card, and we're like. You know what? This card's not once per turn, right? It's, it, was, it was pretty. It was really weird because since they're gonna, this is for next week, and it's only you guys probably don't know this, but that's gonna be a surprise OTK where they don't need to commit into Sprite Elf. They don't have to commit to Gigantic. They don't have to commit to anything. They just put four monsters on the board, and then they, as long as they can make a mosquito somewhere in there, you're dead. And that's how it's going to be. It's nice. uh pretty silly. Just I like that. It boosts the uh, sprite deck a bit. It boosts the deck that's on tier limits. I, I like that. Yeah, because it, it, like tier limits always puts up like a very fat monster somewhere on the board. And it's such a, it's a, such a weird thing where you can just like, oh, it, it feels like they're Numeron now. They're crashing all your monsters, but you're taking like all the damage. Honestly, I think I'm going to... What would you put? I'm going to respectfully disagree here. Oh, DD Crow sucks. DD Crow Skull Meister Bell, they're all ass. But the thing with Biss did... Is, and it seems so basic. It seems like 2000. Is it because they're so big? Yeah, it literally. <laughs> I know it sounds so like bad, but like in, if you actually think about this logically, think of their board and you just end phase summon a Bisted. You just summon another, summon two Bisted cards and just enter the battle phase. It sounds so like, what is this, Steven, 2005? But yeah, I mean. It, it messes it the battle phase. It. it, it they don't like they actually out their entire board like they're kind forced of. to they're forced to main phase elf let's assume they're playing the toad version which is i think the most played version you could summon any other monster they have three monsters in the field they'll main phase summon something else so elf is uh, instantly loses its negate with the toad you enter the battle phase they'll smash or something and you just clear the toad you clear everything else there's no the, the mascarena they'll use right away if they play it it, all the interruptions are gone, and then you have five cards, four cards left in your hand, and you just obliterate them into the Shadow Realm. Okay, uh, that's fair. That's fair. I want to add, though, the Mosquito. Like, the Mosquito is, like, a, a super big game changer when it comes to putting Bisted on the field. Because now they don't want to clear your big monster. He's 25. Sure, I can't do the direct damage. I don't, I don't think I can OTK you, but if they have Mosquito plus four monster, you're still dead. Because they're just going to crash all their monsters. I didn't realize this. I was reading Mosquito. Yes, I do have a copy of Shadow Mosquito on my... Right here, guys. I have a no, Shadow Mosquito. No, I was literally just Googling it as we speak. What's it do? What's it do? So, okay, guys. <laughs> I'm going to read this. Okay, it requires two level two monsters, all right? Cannot be destroyed by battle, and you take no battle damage involving this card, which makes it... This is a pretty easy, like... like it's almost like a substitute to, uh, to uh, Cavalier. So, yeah. all monsters are must attack if able now when an attack is declared any monsters attack declaration is declared uh you can activate one of these effects detach a material from this card and if you do put a hallucination counter on one face up monster your opponent controls it doesn't target the hallucination counter all it does is that monster's effect are negated so it's a non-targeting negate on attack declaration but the other effect is that so inflict damage to your opponent equal to one monster with hallucination counter so you, this is not once per turn the damage effect doesn't require you to detach 
So you put, you just attack with this, put a hallucination counter on any of the monsters. You can attack with the weakest monster. You can attack the weakest thing, put a hallucination counter on the highest thing, and then you just swing with everything, and they'll take damage. So if they, if they're at, they have a 2,700 attack monster, boom, instantly OTK'd. I don't, I don't think they'll go into a turn one, like turn zero, right? Not turn zero. This is a, this is definitely a turn yeah. two play where it's like, oh, yeah. you committed so hard into the board, you burn all their negates. Boom, you can go in and you can go for game. I think this is great information to know. We all need to be prepared for this. 100% yeah. need to be prepared for it. But in this regard, let's say you're playing branded where your basic cards have to stay in attack. Oh, that's more understandable. But oh, my basic cards are getting linked off or something, baby. Or like Beatrice or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that'll be okay. Uh, it's okay. Basic, they're not crazy. They're not auto win. There's not like, you know, it's not a crazy auto win card, but I do think the basic cards have really good value. Yeah. Maybe just even the Magnum and the Druid Worm, the Soren here. I mean, only if you're playing uh, the graveyard, but it's good to know, uh, the mosquito thing you mentioned, this will come up and no one knows about it. I don't know about it. And I'm the best you can play on the planet. Yeah. I don't know. I was reading this card. We were play testing with this thing. Yeah, and, it's, uh, it's good to know. We need to be careful of yeah, this thing. This thing. Maybe a surprise I mean, OTKs. Yeah. Surprise OTKs. Coming out of nowhere is really funny because especially when yeah. you've already dealt damage to your opponent, dude, that, that reach, anything can kill your opponent at that point. It makes like random boards like lethal for some, for no reason. Skullmeister and Bell. Bell's good for like the elf revival uh, would, only would, but it's like these are these are really the, bad. the value they, of a bell it's, it's a meg one and they don't like gain any I, i'd even put an x i, I wouldn't put that you like, wouldn't even I, put it I, in no just because like, not, i'd I, also put the dd quad in x the reason why if you bell them like they, they don't care too much for the elf like the elf is more so just getting them like a plus one for later but you're negging one while they're already a huge plus i'm yeah. not a fan uh gamma herald. and herald i love though because yeah, you gamma they're, they're or herald big, yeah. and get the thing off the board yeah uh they're they can't close. summon no, they can't yeah, summon. Nice, nice nimble beaver it would be a shame if it hit the graveyard yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right next up flu ashes you know what i'm gonna put this here you it's, it's just one of those things that doesn't always work and you might get like chain blocked along the way but you should still hit eaglin guys if you have to hit a card it's, it's always going to be eaglin the big one as long as you're careful for the chain blocking and uh flunder also like let's be honest guys flunder does suck uh half the a third of the time they will lose to themselves but they do have hands where they can play around like in ash like it's nothing yeah so if, as, as long as they open like don't open one of those it's fine Valor and imperm like say uh, like say like i like ash Valor and imperm like if you could put in two of these nine or uh, with gamma and wells uh, like two of these 12 you're you're golden oh yeah as long as you if, if you dodge that quick if you if your imperm or Valor resolves yeah. the duel's over yeah it's it's very hard for them to play because they're a normal summon base deck after all yeah and yeah. if they need a field spell to get the follow-up but if you yeah. hit their main monster dude that board's so weak oh yeah oh, that yeah. board is like really weak even saving an imperm for the barrier statue depending on your deck is also very solid depending on the situation make sure you time it right guys your best timing is standby yeah. phase before you have to do any kind of main phase normal summon shenanigan because if they get to that trap card you get to the main phase they're playing on your turn. Literally, this game, this this format is play on your opponent's turn. If you can't play on your opponent's turn, you're not winning the game. Yeah. Uh, so D Shifter is uh super bad. Like yeah. it it yeah. helps. <laughs> it helps them a lot. Yeah. Bisted is DD Crow is I, super bad as well. Yeah, I think the, the rest are all super. Like the grave. That, that's the cool thing with Wonder. Like if you think Shifter, Crow, Bell, Meister, Bisted. They're all so good against the best deck, but they're literally useless cards against Flunder. Yeah. So that's a big plus for Flunder. Gamma and Gamma is actually I okay. Like it. It's like, but you'll get again, you might need a second copy just in case yeah. they have the field spell. So yeah. It's it's very conditional on this one. So we'll, we'll do yeah. this here. It, you you need, you might need a second card to follow up with it. I'm still very happy with this because like you like if you have there, like I can't stress enough, this deck does suck. So uh sometimes you will need another one for sure. Uh, 100%. If they have a field spell, you will need another one. Yes. But if they don't have the field spell and they just open classic, let me summon Robina and you Gamma. They're going back home crying. So, but if they if they do have the field spell, you for sure will need another one. Next, we have Bestials. Ash, I'm going to give a check because there's... Uh... There's, there's, there's branded fusion. <laughs> Hitting branded fusion is always going to be good. Letting them resolve branded fusions means that they're going to go into Albion. Albion will dump the two. They're going to throw one card into the graveyard. They're going to try to get into. So for Bestial, it's more like branded Bestial? Yeah, this is branded Bestial. Like, Ash is like, you can also stop Magnumut from getting a card, which is okay as well. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, Brian Infusion. I'm good. <laughs> Brian yeah, Brian Infusion just should be the <laughs> should be the the main one that we take away from oh, yeah. this. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. See you Imperm later, Brian Infusion. Valor, you're again. You're mainly hitting branded cards because like the bestials themselves, you, there's not much to hit. A lot of stuff active in the graveyard, and they just summon from graveyard. You can't really answer too much of it, and they are a back row deck. So with the back row stuff like uh, regain and beast, you can't touch those cards. They're just getting free yeah. summons nonstop. That's why across the board here, note that if you guys don't know how bestials play, you guys must be living under a rock or something. Because <laughs> people like they're literally in everyone's decks because they're just engines. I know people were playing like like I was looking at uh, Jesse Cotton's build and he played one Serenir, two Magma, three Druus Worms. He wanted all three names because. He wanted to yeah, have... just recently for his recently for I think Dortmund he added a third Magnum just recently. He just re-added. Basically, he wants as many names as possible because you want to activate all of them. Because if you if you double up on names, you can't activate them. They're hard. They're hard OBT. Yeah. So, yeah. um, Bestials, if you D shifted them, branded Bestial, it's not a full blowout just because of the branded cards. Yeah, basically they can still kind of play, so it's not full on like blowout where they they completely die. Uh, but it's still really good because you don't have to deal with the the bestial side of things. It's just that the branded mm -hmm. side lets them stay alive. And ironically, this is again one of those decks. That, like, if the format didn't have tier Shizu, we'd see a lot more bestials because yeah. bestials like tier Shizu. They're good against themselves. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, for the bestial, the same thing. A uh, DD Crow, I don't really like too much because you don't gain value. Yes, you stop them from summoning, but. If you win the Bisted battle, and if you're able to, when they Bisted, and you chain the Bisted, you are gaining much advantage. Like when you're winning this Bisted battle, it is very good against itself. Just be careful. If you're having a Bisted battle, uh, keep in mind Regained. Brandon Regained, uh, the turn player always loses if the, both players have Regained in the field, but that's not going to happen a lot. I mean, not yeah. many people are playing it, but yeah, but it's like very, very good in the in the in that. Skull and yeah, the Lubellion battle as well. Yeah, sure. Lubellion. You definitely want to remove Lubellion because Lubellion is like so free and it helps a lot of recursions. Yeah, and places their cards effect. back. Yeah, it's not an effect. It's it just comes back. Meister, yeah, Meister and Bell don't stop it. Dweller doesn't stop it. So, Bisted and Crows. Bisted stops it. So, that's, I like Bisted against it a lot. Uh, Bell is... Yeah, Bell's, Bell and Skullmeister. They don't really... Okay, the only thing that really you're stopping is Druus Worm and Serenir. In, you're not I'm really not, stop, you're not really stopping much with these two. I'm not too big of a fan of those against uh, this deck. I don't think they're I don't think they're that good. I mean, th th you can use it. They're usable. Yeah, but they're usable, they're, but they're not like they're absurd. Not, or, yeah, yeah, they don't really do that much. Like Bell can't stop Lubellion from coming back because it doesn't even activate, right? So, what are you really doing? You can stop like Skullmeister can stop like the Albion stuff from going off. It can prevent the follow up of cards, but you're eating a full board still at this point yeah. the board is still being developed and you're only stopping like the additional stuff that gets tagged along gamma it's good i think it's actually still pretty good i think if i, I think you destroy the body they don't get the sign magnum doesn't get the surge drew us from gets popped from hand so it doesn't get the pop Sarah also, is the only one that goes off yeah it also depends on who who's going first because this did have this specific effect that say it's only a quick effect if your opponent has a monster so you won't be able to gamma the quick effect of the bistids but if the if you have no monster and they're using the Bisted on their turn, then Gamma is good or Herald is good. Well, Herald could be good at any time, I guess. But I would say it's it's not bad. Like it's definitely situational, because like Bisteds are best when it's quick effects. Oh yeah. But so you can't stop the quick effect because you'll have a monster in that reason. But if you have no monsters and they're just using it randomly, you stop a Magnum or Lubellion. I mean, yeah, that's that's great value. So it's definitely situational. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's about right. All right, Naturia. Surprise hey, You you are the Naturia master. I'm I'm skipping out on the Naturia. You're the Naturia goat. You're the Naturia god. No man, Naturia. Okay, I've been playing this one a lot. I've been having a lot of fun with Naturia. I'm not gonna lie. It's a very very strong deck. It's very similar to, like, it's super consistent. 
also because it can run shizu cards it also runs i my version i didn't show any of you guys i run fenrir in my deck because it's also an earth monster so even under like the vernacelf lock of earth monsters i can still banish your stuff i can still search a monster and it also gives me a level seven body so i can turn it into like a lot of synchros if you guys don't know but regardless ash blossom if you don't want to get onto all the details ash blossom yeah it's actually a pretty good card against this because mole cricket needs to be hit every single time Mole Cricket is so strong, and like it actually plays into the format really well because if someone goes into like the Bestial stuff, they're using Bestials on their own cards. Because if you're playing this deck, they're not gonna hit your cards. There's nothing for you to really hit unless you throw in your own Bestial stuff into the graveyard. But because they're summoning out the larger monsters, especially when they went first, you get to summon a two monster with Mole Cricket because their monsters are gonna be stronger. Like most of your stuff is pretty weak until you start going to like the real synchros. Um, Imperm and Valor. Uh, I would say you probably should hit something, but you might want to save the imperm. If you, if you play spells, then oh, you probably want to save the imperm for yeah. like beast, because like yeah. you're gonna get all your spells negated. It's yeah. pretty nice, rough. Nice pen deck. Nice yeah. pen deck. <laughs> nice pen deck. So <laughs> yeah, nap beast. Yeah, nice. It is pretty rough. You might have to burn it on a baron. You might have to burn oh. out a Baron because they can summon out Baron. You might have to save it for a Chen Ying because, like, when they have Chen Ying, that's like the worst because they use Medora to proc Chen Ying for free, and you're going to um, you're gonna suffer. You're gonna suffer a lot. D Shifter, they're a graveyard based deck. Nichuria, uh Sacred Tree, Nichuria, the new quick play spell. Those are not once per turn at all. So if they get milled into the graveyard, they're gonna proc. But if you get them all banished, they're not gonna be able to Medora to cycle it. And that deck cycles the Naturia stuff nonstop because if they need to summon from the deck and they milled their card, they're just gonna chain the Medora or the Keldo, shuffle it back in. Now they guarantee to have the target. So it's like, they don't care about milling out their stuff because they get to cycle it all the way just fine. Now, as for, like, Bestial, DD Crow is slightly better because you don't want them to have the right target. Like, they do have Graveyard Summon coming from uh, all Camilla. All Earth, too, right? Yeah, they're all Earth. Camilla summons back when you summon a card, and Cricket summons itself back whenever you special summon out, I believe, an extra deck monster, or I summon out an extra deck, a Naturia monster, so it just comes back. And... Mole Cricket is a quick effect during the main phase. So you actually have to time yourself. If you have like Imperm Veil or something like that, you have to time it so that negate their stuff before they get into the main phase, if that's what it takes. But they also have like a revive back. So you just have to be very careful with all that stuff. So um, yeah, I would say Bestial cards are bad, but the uh, the Crow is okay. But who's like, like I know there are people that are mean Crow. That, that, that you, you might want to hit some of their stuff. Uh, so that they don't get the revival because they do have the revival. The problem with DD Crow is DD Crow targets the quick play spell doesn't target, so uh, you're not always going to be able to hit the most successful thing. You you always basically if they have two good targets, they're they're getting their way out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Bell's also pretty good because because of the, the fact that they don't target. You get oh. to bell their 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 quick play spells when they're trying to do the revive or summon from hand because they can summon from hand as well. So that's why bell's good. Skullmeister is a bit weird. I mean, Skullmeister. I guess you can. Does Skullmeister hit monsters or does it hit like all graveyard effects? Uh, effects. Also, oh. it's not the trap and grave. Oh well then, Skullmeister right. is actually <laughs> not that bad. Skullmeister is actually nice. all right, and Gamma and whatever they're all good because. Uh, be before they get out Camilla, Camilla is the one that changes the cost of the card. If you were to tribute a monster, you can mill two cards instead. So, if they don't have Camilla out, if you Gamma on their card, it's kind of like Call of the Graving, though. They just lose the Mulkrick. Mulkrick needs to tribute unless Camilla's on field. So, these are some of the stuff that you have to be aware of. I guess, even for Crow... I guess the the good part is you can probably curl away the card coming back is like you know especially for the mole cricket you just just if you mole cricket goes nuts you're dead how about that mole cricket goes off you're gonna die and nice. yes it's also another deck that has a goose guy it plays like anything that you hit them hard with they they can just backpedal into Baguska. They can backpedal into like a Abyss Dweller. They have Keldo. And they have the other Earth Fairies as well. So because that they have the other Earth Fairy, you know, it's like the, the, the Duck one. The Vernus of Duck one, the one that adds a, another Earth Fairy. They can play the Ishizu cards pretty well. Some of them would even choose to play Gravekeeper Trap. Just in case that they open, say, a Naturia Sacred Tree and they can't put it into the graveyard. The Trap card will let them discard it. 
and then they're going to be able to search for both in a chariot card and a shizu card if they have the gravekeeper trap i don't see why they would not run it they could even play the exchange of the spirit in there just because they're already playing the gravekeeper trap anyway and if that lands you're you're kind of already dead because <laughs> i give no grave effects anymore that's kind of the rundown of the Naturia. There's a lot of good, like, hand traps in general, they do take a bigger brunt of the force, like, because they have weaknesses across the board, getting hit by everything. So everything somehow is good against it, but not, like, perfect. Mm -hmm. That's solid, man. I think we just did an incredible rundown of all five decks. Yeah, and these are the most popular decks. Like, Shizu, yeah. Sprites, Funder, they all saw top. Naturia also to saw tops. Bestial, surprisingly, is just an engine that's splashing every deck. So there you have it, guys. This is the hand trap ultimate counter guide, and guys. We, we, we would have done one for pendulums, but nothing stops pendulums, so there was no point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. Make sure you guys, if you guys enjoyed this part one, we're gonna go into your games two and three. So we're gonna go first, go second. Game going first games is gonna be on Triff's channel, so make sure you guys subscribe to Triff Gaming. Subscribe here because we got part three, which is uh, oh yeah, that's when we have amazing. to go go second. Go second. Oh yeah, at some point we'll have to go second because we're gonna win every game. So this is gonna be very important. Yeah, to two zero everybody. This is this exactly. is this is the train for the two zero train or the reverse two zero train. So. Exactly. Exactly. All right, they're gonna be sure. epic. It's gonna be epic. So yes, thank you guys for watching. Check out the other channels. Check out the upcoming videos. I'm super excited, and I guess we'll see you in the next one after you two everyone else, baby. Fuck yeah! Thank you guys! Have a good one! Peace! Peace!